So we're joined today by Sheila Castillo from the University of Dublin. Sheila, thank you very much for joining us today. You gave us a really interesting talk on um, the uh, evaluation of LLMs. Yeah. Um, so do you think that LLMs and the hype of LLMs are going to match the hype that we saw of neural machine translation? Yeah, so like I said in my um, presentation, there is always hype when a new technology comes in, right? So we have a hi we had the hype when the SMT systems came in, with the NMT systems came in, and now we have a hype with the AI uh, coming in. Um, yeah, so it's going to go up and it's going to stay there for a little while, but it's true that LLMs have like these incredible capacities that we've been seeing, uh, but it's just with the evaluation, and I hope that there's going to be more evaluation being done, we're going to be able to really tell what is realistic uh, to do in, t in translation with LLMs, and then after we figure that out, we're going to reach like a plateau of productivity until the next breakthrough comes in. Uh, th th that's basically what has been happening in the past 50 years. So uh, maybe a little bit faster now, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so yeah. Yeah, super interesting. So you were talking as well in your talk about the blue scores and how that's being used to analyze content that's been produced by LLMs, but it's perhaps not the best uh, benchmark potentially yes. moving forward. I don't know if you want to talk us a bit about that. Yes, so, uh, you know, automatic scores that are reference-based, so blue scores, basically what it does is to compare the machine translation output to a reference translation. So it's just like, a, it calculates how similar that translation is to this translation. But we all know, and it's been a long time that we are advocating this, that there are many different ways to translate. So basing uh, the quality uh, into one single translation is not fair with the system, is not fair with the translation. Uh, so we have new automatic metrics that have been developed, uh, you know, uh, that are, are better, that are more um, correlates well with human judgments than blue scores. And uh, so <laughs> I am trying to teach uh, my students, for example, and everywhere I go that blue scores could not be the only metric that you use to uh, evaluate uh, quality. Um, I think the best way for, um, to evaluate a machine translation quality would be a mix of everything. So automatic metrics are very good to measure the quality in the development of the system. So you make an implementation and you need to know if it's working. You run an automatic metric and you say, okay, this implementation worked. I am going to keep going that way. And then you keep going because a human evaluation is expensive, so it's not feasible to do during the development. When you have your, your system finished that to go into production and you want to test if the quality is good, you need to put humans there. And then you need to develop um, an evaluation methodology that will answer the questions of, is this system good enough for what it was developed? Uh, so yeah, so basically, as a machine translation evaluation specialist, that's my, my goal is to make people understand that uh, human uh, evaluation should be done uh, in all times and automatic metrics. <laughs> we have to be very careful which ones we choose. Yeah, and of course we have to think about, uh, as you were saying, bias, uh, who's actually doing the evaluation exactly, and, yeah. uh, and all of those aspects of that come into play when a human is doing an evaluation, right? Exactly, yeah. So like an automatic metric, uh, unless it's developed it's specific to look into bias, cannot tell if there is any errors uh, like that. So it's generally a human evaluation with context that will be able to tell um, if the it, what are the harms of this machine translation systems bringing into the translation. Uh, so this is another thing that I've been trying to get people to understand is that you need to run human evaluation, yes, but you need to run that with context because evaluating sentences in isolation, it's not enough to recognize all these problems. It's like bias is just one of them. It could be like gender bias or racial bias or uh, yeah, but we have many other like lexical ambiguity sometimes cannot be identified if you just look at one sentence. Uh, 
because it's ambiguity. So it could be one thing, it could be other thing. And sometimes both of them make sense in, inside that sentence. But if you put back in the context, you're going to see, oh, actually, it's that one and not that one. Mm -hmm. So we need context and we need uh, to have always human oversight for that one. Very interesting. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you for having me.